everyone, I want you to understand that who you're about to meet is someone that is, um, the caliber of her artistry is unlike any one you've met before. Her name is synonymous with music. Her beauty is, <laughs> is just unlike any other artist. She's a human being. She is... I, there's so much, I, I, I'm tongue tied, but I'm so excited for you guys to meet her. So let me just say, welcome, Miss Penny Ford. Yeah! Hey. You know, girl, you know what? You know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Penny, my friend, you look absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. I'm just sitting up here with this COVID still on me. I, you know, I'm, I try to fix up a little bit, but. Baby, if you, if this is a little bit, baby, I got, I got a whole lot to do. <laughs> just I have been, I have been in nothing but PJs and sweats for most of the year. Uh -huh. And um, I've, I've kind of enjoyed it, but it takes me a little bit to get back in step of things when people tell me, oh, you, you got to. Uh -huh. Put on makeup and get yourself <laughs> up and going, but I'm I'm working on it. Hey, you look good, darling. You you I you haven't changed you. in, gosh, what the eighties? This I mean, you haven't changed. You still look like your little girl pictures. You were just this gorgeous woman that everyone is now like, hey, Penny, hey. <laughs> You know, I well, you know what it is. I I I've always jokingly said my secret is, I never married and I never had any kids. Bam. So it kind of froze me Bam. in time and <laughs> Bam. kind of kicked a little bit of that stress off. You know what yes, I mean? Yes, darling. Yes, darling. But, um, yeah, well, it's been rock and roll for forty years now. Good God of my, that's, this is, um, I'm, I always say amazing. I'm going to try to try some other words, but that's the first thing that comes to mind. It's just, it truly is amazing. Your career, the span of your career, and that you are still a chart topping artist. That's what's so amazing. And so we're going to, we're going to let people know the penny that I know. There's penny and then there's penny girl. Yeah. So here's penny. The penny, who's my penny? You started now. You're from Ohio. Yes, I am from Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Shout out Ohio. Cincinnati. Is in that <laughs> house. Now you were. You're one of those child artists that um, you went to a a, a, a a artist school, didn't you? I went to Catholic school, I went to prep school, and I went to art school. Okay, that's right. Um, I, I, was, I was kind of an overachiever, and I had a whole lot of energy. So my grandmother put me in everything she could to spend up. I mean, I was in drill team, mm -hmm. step club, musical theater, hey. yeah. marching band, volleyball, cheerleading, African dance, tap, jazz, piano, whatever she, you, you know. You name it, you name it. And your parents, like your dad, Gene, he mm -hmm. played with um, um, Benny Goodman. Yeah, and um, uh, Cab Calloway and a lot. He started out as a, like a big band guy, kind mm -hmm. of guy. Mm -hmm. So when um, those guys would be, the guys in the back and the bands dance with the, he started out as that, and then he played sax and vibes, mostly in trumpet. And uh, and then he switched to production where he worked a lot with James Brown at the very beginning. Oh, we come on now. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. People don't understand. You come from this musical family. Everything around you is, is about the arts. Mm -hmm. Your brother, your, no, let's start with your sister, your sister Sharon. Sharon was um, a harlot, wasn't she, with Beth Mittler? Yes, yes, she was a harlot, and then formerly of the harlots, and then she went solo, and she ruled the dance floors yes, she for did. 
a, a while, quite a while. Yes, she did. And she wind up working with Luther. Well, again, um, Bette Miller. Um, she worked with a whole lot of artists. Barry um, Manilow. Yeah. Oh. All those guys were like, they were like a New York clique back in mm -hmm. those days. Mm -hmm. It was the Studio 54 days and, mm -hmm. you know, it was a whole New York clique of people that knew each other and ran around with each other. And then your brother, Gene Jr., he was a, he's a, a producer, arranger, songwriter, producer. Yeah. Arranger. Yeah. And he created Cool in the Gang. Yes. <laughs> Look mm -hmm. at that. He did. And he, he actually gave George Clinton his first job in the business as a doo-wop singer. What? Yeah, well, George, George has a, had a pompadour and they were singing doo-wop. What? I, yeah, he started out doo-wop. I didn't know any of this. You know, I didn't either for a long time, but George makes sure to tell me every time I see him. <laughs> and everybody else, no matter where we, were, we are, Mm -hmm. I, the last time I ran into him was in the um, airport in, well, mm -hmm. no, that wasn't the last time, but the last time out in the world I ran into him, we were in the airport in Oslo, Norway. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And you know, I wasn't expecting to see any of us uh -huh. in Oslo. Mm -hmm. And I saw this group of people and they had this energy. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> and as they got closer, it was George and them, and we were kind of crisscrossing. Artists do that sometimes uh -huh. during festival season and touring seasons. Mm -hmm. And he just told everybody in the whole airport, including his whole band, uh -huh. like her brother gave me my start. Oh. You know, so sometimes I find out information from back in those days, even, mm -hmm. you know, even today. That is funny. I last saw George Clinton and um, the Funkadelic here in Atlanta last year. And when I say everybody in the audience, they were on their feet the entire show, that's the caliber of artistry mm -hmm. that, uh, oh, that, yeah. you are in, that you are in, where everyone knows yeah. your songs, everyone knows your, and everyone is always, you know, when your songs come on, everyone is mm -hmm. out just partying. So yes, mm -hmm. baby, yes. Now, yeah. you, your mom um, was an evangelist. Yeah, my mom eventually, eventually was a pastor. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was a pretty incredible woman. I mean, when, when yeah. I was born, she was a nightclub singer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like on the Chitlin circuit. Uh -huh. And that's how she met my dad. Uh-huh. And uh, but eventually she um turned her whole life around and she cleaned up eight crack houses in the hood in Cincinnati mm. and turned them into tutoring centers um for disadvantaged children and mm -hmm. became a, a a champion for the community. And uh yeah. That is awesome. And a you pastor. Yeah, you and I, we talked about that. Your mom, and we're going to get into that um, because your mom is such an um, incredible human being. And um, I want people to know this about your mom when we get to it. Um, I want to, um, so, and I'm excited to just, I'm excited for people to hear this side of, this, of your story about your mom. Oh, yeah. Yes, so uh, we got, oh gosh, I got a feeling this is going to be a multi-episode <laughs> interview. I got a feeling because there's so cool. much, yeah, there is so much about you and and your work, your work and your worth that um, people need to know. Um, well, I'm kind of an introvert, so I, I don't know. talk to a whole lot of people, but oh. I'm freely opening up myself to you. Oh, thank you, darling. I'm just so honored. I really am. And 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 I like I've told you in the past that everyone that I interview, I'm such a fan, but I'm also your friend. And yes. I want people to know the side of you that they that I want them to know they know your music, but I want them to know you and how and and the accomplishments and your greatness. And mm -hmm. um you know, and I, I, you know, people have a habit of saying, oh, I used to listen to this. And I told you this, you don't understand, you're still on my playlist. 
I'm bouncing around to this, you know, to your music constantly. And, and that's what, and, and I know the audience doing the exact same thing. So thanks so much. You know, I mean, it's, it's important that we know that people support us yes. and now we have this technology mm -hmm. that we can engage directly with people uh -huh. instead of, you know, like, because back in the day, we really didn't get the information. You know, we didn't know we could be like number one and not know it. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Tell us, you know. That's right. Now mm -hmm. you, once you, um, what was your big break? In the in um, well, I have to say that mm -hmm. Snap ended up being like one of the more defining things of my life for whatever reason mm -hmm. that was meant to define what I was to become. Mm -hmm. um, but you said, what was my biggest project? Yeah, before, well, no, not your biggest project. I said your big break because I know everyone oh, my knows big that, break. but people, because oh, yeah. people don't understand well, Mm -hmm. uh, they, when they hear, they'll hear you, people know your voice and they'll hear you in a commercial. Yeah. They'll hear you, you know, on, on an yeah. album or something. And I know yeah. that you, you're, you had started with the Gap Band. You were supporting vocalists with the Gap Band. Well, I kind of was, I wasn't really singing with the Gap Band. Mm -hmm. I signed to the same label as them. Total Experience, right? Total Experience Records. Mm -hmm. And I found them after I had worked at Motown for a while as a demo yeah. singer. Mm -hmm. And um, their studio was up the street. So somehow I miraculously stumbled upon them. <laughs> and um, I felt a familiar spirit. Mm -hmm. And it turns out what that was is everybody there grew up Kojic, Church yes. of God in Christ. Yes, yes. So, yeah. So, so that was the familiar spirit that I felt up there. Mm -hmm. And um, I just kept hanging around until I got signed there as a writer. Mm -hmm. And in the process of writing a song with um, Oliver Scott, who wrote mm -hmm. Keep Running for the Gap uh -huh. Band, uh -huh. um, I sang all the vocals for the, uh, the, on the demo for this song that I was writing. And the company decided to sign me and include me in this massive... Um, distribution deal that they had going on, like mm -hmm. right at the time when distribution deals were just starting to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everything's a, a matter of, you have to have like a trifecta of things, uh -huh. mm -hmm. you know, and um, one of them includes skill, yes. one of them is timing, yes. and the other is favor. Yes, say that one more time. Say that one more time, mm -hmm. don't you? Don't yeah. you? Don't well, you? Yeah, you do want one thing um, you have to have, I, I, and not necessarily in that order, uh -huh. but you have to, you know, the timing has to be great mm -hmm. um, and you have to have skill and you have to have favor. Finally, somebody says it. People Another don't understand. Another thing is, is a work ethic. Yes, it you is. You gotta have a work ethic too. You yes, know, you do. Yes, this you is do. hard work. It is. And you're going to get, you know, and, and a lot of people don't understand. It's, it takes some work to do. It does. To do it. It does. Now, as you were doing the supporting vocalist, you wind up working with um, um, Zap Band. No. Well, I did Zap back when I was 14, before I ever even left Cincinnati. What? Um, yeah, they were like the first big band that I went out with uh -huh. on the road right at the beginning of More Bounce. And my grandmother let me, you know, uh -huh. some somewhere inside of her, uh -huh. she knew that I was going after something, uh -huh. you know, she knew I wasn't out there, you know, like squandering the time and the mm -hmm. opportunities. Mm -hmm. So she just had to have faith. And yeah, I, I went on the road with them when I was 14 because by that time, I was already singing in nightclubs. Mm. Kind of like this lady on this picture. Do you see yes, what that is? Baby, I saw that. I was thinking of torch songs. I can and I can see you, hear you singing them torch songs. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, at 14. 
Look at that. <laughs> but you know what's so funny? Because so, we we were saying we were talking about that oil, that Pompeii oil that uh, mm -hmm. that they would lay on you, and then nothing but that Pompeii. So that's why your grandmother was okay with you going on tour with the Zab Band because you were breathing. Yeah from that Pompeii blessed Earl. Yeah, well, you know, honestly, my grandmother was Catholic. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. But she was very, very intuitive. Mm -hmm. She saved my life on a couple occasions without knowing that's what she was doing. I mean, my grandmother raised me from birth. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my mm -hmm. she took me out of the hospital mm -hmm. when my mom had, had me. It was, I think, th and that hospital still stands in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. But I think that my grandmother's spirit is still banned from that hospital. Oh. Just oh. because of how much hell she raised. Uh-huh. <laughs> she came up there and raised me. She probably still, they probably got a picture of her spirit on the wall. She ain't laughing. <laughs> I guarantee you, know? you. I guarantee you. Them spirits, so, are, yeah. spirits are strong. So, you know, um, yeah, those were my humble beginnings. But because I was, I grew up in Ohio and I was around people like Bootsy Collins, mm -hmm. um, Lakeside, uh, oh, no. Come on Ohio now. players. Come on now, I was waiting on you to oh, say God. that. Come on now, whoa! Slave, oh, players. Mm -hmm. Midnight Star. Yes, SOS fans. Yeah. Oh yes, um, Norman Connors too, around. right? Norman, huh? Con Norman, Con Norman Connors? You know what? I don't know if Norm, you know, he's been popping up lately mm -hmm. because, you know, um, a friend of mine was telling me that they were um, listening to you on my starship. Uh -huh. So I was telling them, my sister Sharon sang on something with Norman Connors, I just remember. Uh -huh. And I looked it up. She's singing on You Are My Starship. Yes, she is. Yes, she so is. So it's so weird. I've been listening to that for years, you know, and get oh. into it at the, at the basement parties. Oh, I never I never knew that that was the actual song she sang. Oh. But you see, and that's, and um, I explained this in another interview of mine, and, and this is what music does. Music, it, 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 it has, it's beyond spiritual effect mm -hmm. on people. And I know me, I, when oh, yeah. I'm, when I'm needing a lift or if I'm, you know, having a bad time and I put some music on and it just, it gets, it changes my whole demeanor. It changes everything. It's, it, 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 it has a chemical reaction. And that's what we do. It, yes. it certainly does. That's very true. I mean, yes. what we do is we create tones and vibrations mm -hmm. that seep into the serotonin levels of people. Yes, it does. And and that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And you can you can either use those powers for good mm -hmm. or for the dark side. That's right. And uh, that's um, kind of the dilemma we're in right now yes. is um, bringing the music back to something that empowers people and makes them feel better instead of music that makes everybody angry and want to go out and rob somebody. Right, you know, right. We, these images that they allowed mm -hmm. to seep into and overpower the art. Yes. Um, you know, it's the same energy that seeped into the church, yeah. that seeped Ooh. into governments, yes. that seeped into the banking industry. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's um, definitely an in energy that has infiltrated every sector of life. Yes, it and has. And we, you know, we, we have to, stay alert and we have to stay aware yes, of right. what's going on because that's the only way we'll be able to keep ourselves fit enough to survive whatever they got that's you know, right. whatever they're throwing at us you know <laughs> that's whatever level of jumanji we in <laughs> and they've been throwing stuff we've been ducking and dodging you know we just have to keep you know doing that kind of thing for the most but part I I will say that um, when you touched upon something about you and the artists that you've worked with, that most of them had, they came from the church. And, mm -hmm. and it's that Pompeii blessed oil, that um, Earl that we worked on, you know, that, that our parents, that blessed oil that they put on us, no matter what we've encountered outside of the church, we always come back. That, that foundation always brings us back and that for yeah. those prayers of protection yeah. always brings us yeah. back. I mean, I stayed, I knew that no matter how far out there I got, mm -hmm. 
um, that I always had, I made sure that I always had some kind of grit on that. Mm -hmm. And I kept that with me, you know, mm -hmm. um, even if I had to go into dark places, mm -hmm. um, I kept that with me. Mm -hmm. And Lord knows, you know, I was bad enough with all of that. Okay. You know, I can only imagine if I had not had any of that knowledge right. of right. spirituality and and how, you know, I was covered and mm -hmm. how to protect yourself and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it helped me and I stayed in it no matter how, you know, my mm -hmm. friends used to think I was crazy, uh -huh. you know, but I would stop my party on Saturday night because I got to go to church in the morning. That's right. <laughs> if I'm, you know, and, uh -huh. and sometimes they would call to go with me. See, and yeah. that's that's what we're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it would generally be because something is going wrong in their lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, they call and ask if I was going to church. And um, I was like, why, what's wrong? Uh-huh. You know, but... Um, you know, yeah, I took everybody to church, Jews, everybody. Uh -huh. They knew that's where I was going on Sunday if I was able, uh -huh. you know. So, I mean, it's like there's, I, with the way I grew up, there's no way I could be able to go to church and I lay up there and don't go and just go. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I'm grateful to be able to have a way to go. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, I mean, and it's not putting an emphasis on the four walls right. or the institution right. of church, but I tell people, you know, when they go, you still mm -hmm. going to church, there's all kinds of stuff up in there. Yes, all kinds of stuff up, up in everywhere, okay? Yeah. But one of, the, one of the reasons why I love the black church so much mm -hmm. is because it's ours. Right. What? And we ain't got a whole lot. We ain't no. got a whole lot that's right. authentically ours. Right. You know, and they're trying to they're trying to, to, to commandeer all the elements out of that. Yes, they are. Yes. You know, and all the all the little all the little, you know, other artists mm -hmm. are learning all the church runs and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that they will never understand that it takes to make that pop yep. is that pompeium girl yeah, no, that pompey earl that pompey earl drizzling down the side them hands that was laid on you with that they pompey earl <laughs> they have not figured that out no they don't and, and there's like you know there is a palpable energy mm -hmm. say you're at a summer festival mm -hmm. and frankie beverly and Mays is there uh -huh. the first three the first three chords of we are one mm -hmm. There is a palpable energy of yes, it is. Yes, forty thousand black people just like yep. eyes they closed, sitting hands up there. Up. Uh -huh. and they you sit know what I'm hey. saying? Hey, that whole and and it's that whole everyone understands that. Hey, when they hear right. a song that takes them back, and and yes. and that one in particular mm -hmm. calms us down, makes us calm. I used to tell my white friends, I said, if you are walking down the street and you encounter a group of angry black people walking towards you. Mm -hmm. If you could sing a little piece of a Frankie Beverly song, <laughs> you might get away. <laughs> you might save your life with that. Cause you're gonna at least get a head start. Cause we're gonna yeah. stop and go at least one or two and you could get, you could get going. You know, I was like, that might save your life child. Yes, because they're going to understand. They're going to give you that head dap. That, oh, okay. Right. We're right. going to do that. Right. We're going to at least go, hey, one, two, before we before we get back with you. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So you might be able to get a head start down the street. That's but, right. That's right. But, and you, um, that's just us. you touched upon something because, um, um, Kojic, a lot of singers and Baptists, a lot of um, artists, came from the church. Um, in particular, we have, we've talked about this um, Cornerstone Baptist Church with James Cleveland. There mm -hmm. were some singers that came out of it. And I remember mm -hmm. as a child, my mother, because my mother um, 
I, my mother, I was, I was the, I'm the baby. And my, I was always with my mom. And so she would take me to the revivals over at um, James Cleveland's church. Mm -hmm. And the singers that have come through there, you, James Cleveland, um, he doesn't get enough props for, for what he, what he brought to the, to this earth, earth. Yeah. He doesn't get enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, back in the day, the powers that be only let us be exposed to a certain amount of people. And back when I came out, mm -hmm. it was an abomination to, to come out of church and be singing secular music or worldly music, you Girl. know? <laughs> yeah. And um, I just didn't even care because mm -hmm. I had discovered jazz and I discovered uh -huh. this whole world of making music with people yeah. Yeah. and combining that with what I, with, with, with that all. I had yes. on me, yes. you know what I'm saying? Yes. And, um, but but back then, wasn't nobody coming out of church, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, but now mm -hmm. everybody's out of church. Everybody. In fact, that's, that's where you go shop for your band. If you need like, I need uh, to get to our player, let me go to church. I know I can find that. one up in there. You better say that. I got somebody Which is that's kind of sad. Up. Yes, somebody that's yeah. coming up that, um, um, Yes, that's all I'll say. Yes, they go to church to get their bands. That's right. And that's where, you, you know, know. that's where I got, I was in church and, and became a part of a lot of things. And it's all because right. they wanted that church sound. They wanted exactly. that church voice. They wanted that exactly. church choir. That's that wall of, yes, that wall of sound that is created from a church choir. They wanted that soul. Mm -hmm. you know? Let the color girl sing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually you um know about not firsthand because people know your voice they couldn't play that whole little have you singing the song with somebody else's face up there yeah well they tried that they had the, uh the first hmm. the video of the power that's not me on the video that's a girl miming my voice you and know that what? girl you didn't even so sing right. you are so right that is very true i saw that the other day I was looking at that. And I was like, well, why is that Penny? We know that's Penny. Well, I, I think I had posted on my page. I have to send you the link, uh -huh. the entire story of how that happened, you know, uh -huh. but long story short, um, you know, they're able to get away with things like that over here because, mm -hmm. you know, they don't in Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. they don't know one black person from the other you mm -hmm. know it's as long as it's an american black and they sound american black mm -hmm. that's fine enough for them and if some people if they could sell it they would and the thing is the thing that saved me is that we happen to be on the same label as millie vanilli oh yeah Ariola munich mm -hmm. and the fallout from millie vanilli had started to happen and they didn't want the same thing to happen to snap so they hurried up and got they heard up and got They snapped uh, their tail right. Yeah, they snapped their tail right. And found that. me. <laughs> and gave me a whole bunch of Deutsche Marks. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when you said over here, you're in Europe. You've been in Europe for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Well, this time I've been over for, you know, um, slightly longer than a decade. But mm -hmm. I've been coming back and forth over here for, you know, um, since about 1984, 1985. Wow, wow. And you're happy, and it's amazing that the, the work that you've done in Europe, um, you, you have steady work in Europe versus mm -hmm. America. Yeah, it's true. Um, over here, mm -hmm. I, I work, I'm booked like sometimes two or three years in advance. Mm -hmm. um, Americans aren't so much into um, European dance music. Mm -hmm. And Europeans, there's this thing over here where they're stuck kind of on the 90s. Uh -huh. <laughs> they love 90s music. That's the best For instance, music. Um, Backstreet Boys come yeah. over here and Clean there up. would be, if back, Backstreet Boys come over here and at least 50, 60,000 people will pack it out. Oh, yeah. See, that's, 
you know, and that's my generation. That's that's mm. my music. That's my music. Yeah, they love 90s music. So, um, you know, and they just fill up. I just do lots and lots of festivals with hundreds of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Now, when did you start it? You started working with um, Shaka Khan. Mm -hmm. And you've actually sat in on some recordings for Shaka. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, there was this thing that Shaka had. Mm -hmm. um, she used to call me a Xerox machine. <laughs> because by the time I met her, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I spent my childhood learning every aspect of her records. Yes. Every yep. string line, every horn line, every bass line. At all the liner notes, I knew who was singing what, where, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, all everything. I knew it almost better than she did. Uh -huh. And um, so she used to call me Xerox machine. So sometimes if she didn't want to do something, she would send me to do it, you know, uh -huh. um, and they wouldn't be so upset that they didn't have her. You know they, what I mean? Because your voice, your voice is something else. I, but I was just in there having fun, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. She would go in at one point. She said she one project she went in. She told him, she said, "I'm I'm only going to sing this once, <laughs> you, and then and I'm out of here." Uh -huh. She said, "If you want some more vocals, call Penny." Uh, okay. And they called me. I came in there. It was like being at an amusement park of vocals for me. <laughs> you know, I mean. I got I got this one shocker track and I get to build around it. Uh -huh. That was like playing with vocal Legos for me. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yes, ma'am. And, and the, the, mm -hmm. no, no, the, just to be able to, um, you know, for me, I sit there and I'm like, Shaka Khan is still that one artist that I'm, you know, I'm still in the Shaka Khan. Shaka, I'm like, that's Shaka Khan standing right there. And I've told you a story about Shaka Khan and Flavor Flav that we'll say for another time. <laughs> so right. so I'm, I, you know, I'm standing there in awe and I see everyone around, I'm in the room and everyone's like, you know, you know, call me by a government name, you know, and I'm like, but that's Shaka Khan. And I was, I would, I guess I was, I was a little afraid to approach her and talk to her, but to mm -hmm. see, because she, I'm such a fan of hers, mm -hmm. such a fan. And to know that you're on the same caliber with Shaka. No, In no, my book, no. in my book, in my book. No, and she's my book like matters. so much bigger and broader <laughs> and smarter and and you know, everything I'm, she's my muse, you know? Yes. Uh -huh. I, even before I had, like when I came to LA, I didn't have any aspirations of being an artist mm -hmm. or being out front at all. The only thing I wanted to do was meet Shaka Khan. <laughs> and it took yes. me many years. I had already made an album. I had already took over for the lead singer of Climax and then yes. took over for the lead singer of SOS band and all that stuff before I met Shaka. And then by the time I met her, my destiny had been fulfilled. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's my girl to this day. We like are like this. Yeah, and I know this. And I'm just like, that's why I'm like, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But I, not. I know you, I know you. Um, you, and you were doing Soul to Soul too, the group Soul to Soul. Yes, I did three albums with Soul to Soul. I worked with them a lot. I worked with Jazzy a lot uh -huh. on some other things as well. Um, there's a remix of Johnny Gill's Wrap My Body Tight that I did, all the female vocals with Jazzy producing. You it's out what? there. You have to look for it. It is out there. I know. I'm telling you, I can, well, I'd pick your voice out of anything. I know. That's, yeah. I know. <laughs> That's funny. Because that, now that's become the new thing. Is like, can you find the Penny Ford voice? Because so many of my friends, you know, have told me over the years, they've almost got into actual physical fights. Yeah! Telling people, I know that's, no, it ain't. 
That's somebody else. Two That's piece not, people. We I be ready to know. two piece people. Yes. No <laughs> any sports. I'm like, don't make me. I'm gonna throw you and have you prostrate. Don't know, make I me. I am so sorry that y'all have to go through that. <laughs> you know, no. but uh, part, part yeah. of that too is because, you know, I did not. I don't know whether it was a good thing or a bad thing. I guess it was a little bit of both mm -hmm. that I did not um, tie myself down to one project or mm -hmm. one train of thinking. So I was all over the place. I was saying mm -hmm. front ground, background, side ground. <laughs> you know, I, I worked with Brandy when I was in my thirties and she was oh. like 15 or or no, I was in my, at least I was in my 20 somethings, I think, uh -huh. or late uh -huh. 20s. And she was like, you know, 15, 16. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, um, that's me. Speaking of, you know, recognizing my voice, I know there's one thing you might not know I was on. What? I have to have them put that on my, um, on Moesha theme. Uh huh. I know it's you. Did you hear me in there? Oh, okay. <laughs> Kenny. This is a in, lot of people that know that. Yeah. People don't understand. Yes, I know your voice. I can pick your voice out of if somebody is playing like you play all the instruments and everybody else is singing, I can pick your voice out of that. I'm telling you. That's why I told you I've had the two piece people over. Penny. I'm like, I know what I know. So yes. But I just I did um mostly for that because I I I kind of messed up that session for everybody else because I, I made sure, you know, cause she was so bad as a singer. Uh -huh. She was so dope as a singer. Uh -huh. I was like, she needs to sing her own theme. Yeah. You know, I'm not understanding that by saying that mm -hmm. the rest of us singers that were there, uh -huh. were going to get paid a whole lot less. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And I, I just didn't operate like that. I was like, I would be so, I would be crying right now if this was my TV show and I sing that well and I couldn't get, you know, and I couldn't sing my own thing. So it ended up mostly on there. That's me going mo to the, a uh -huh. to the, mo to the. Hey. And I got paid good off of that. Hey, go ahead, girl, go. go. I got go paid ahead. good off of that. Mm -hmm. Very, very good um, from, um, after a sag, yeah, I got good, yeah. good sex off of that. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. you also um, produce and arrange um, songs for some well-known artists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a trip, you know. Sometimes I really have to really get in a meditate, med meditate, meditative stance uh -huh. and think about you know, just what I've done, you know, because uh -huh. sometimes I, I find out new stuff, you know, if I go on what we call like an ego search, you know, uh -huh. um, <laughs> where I Google myself, you know, <laughs> see what else is, because sometimes uh, there are like things that people post uh -huh. that I forgot about, like that Apollo thing. I hadn't seen that in years, you know, and that is the, the oh my God. yes, I remember watching it that night, too. And it just, that's why I'm telling you, Penny, your songs, people don't understand that, that physical change, that chemical change, your songs, and then to see you up doing that dance. I'm like, go ahead, Penny. You still are this, I mean, you, oh God, I could just go, you know, I'm gonna go on. But <laughs> uh, you, know, I'm, you know, now what I do is I just do my best old lady Beyonce. That's what I be doing up there. <laughs> And I will throw in a little bit of, I start my show off with a little bit of old Nicki Minaj. Say it now. That that um, tune she did with, um, uh -huh. um, well, my chick bad, my uh -huh. chick good. I do a little bit of like the middle of that. So, uh -huh. and, and you know, my audience, they don't know what that is. Some of them know they're like, what? But they don't know how, they don't know it in that context. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so you come out. I and throw in a little something. <laughs> now you to get, you arrange songs for recordings for Shaka too, didn't you? 
Yes, I did that inadvertently. Inadvertently. The interesting part, yeah, because the interesting part about that mm -hmm. is right during that time, Shaka and I had kind of taken a, a break. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, from yeah. it was it was people yeah. getting wanting to break apart things. And, and you know, oh, okay. um, you know, it was during that, but but it was during that time. You know, Snap was going big. I was signing with Columbia. All that stuff was going on. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really, I didn't have. It wasn't like I was cast into a sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was busy, booked uh -huh. and busy. Uh huh. But I was also. I did some tunes with. Um, Natalie Cole's ex-husband, Andre. Yes, and um, Andre Fisher. Andre Fisher. Uh -huh. He was the original drummer from Rufus. Yes, he, yes indeed. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. And um, I, he was working on something and uh, a, a tune, a Brenda Russell tune. Uh -huh. And they wanted me to sing the demo Mm -hmm. And at first they told me the demo was for Gladys. Uh -huh. So that was one of the reasons why I could do demos so well mm -hmm. is because I could sing like the artist that mm -hmm. the writer was going for. So I, I could somehow put in my mind to put it in context, proper context where that particular artist would understand it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh I sang that song for Gladys and it ended up being The Woman I Am, which was mm -hmm. a title cut from uh -huh. Chaka's song. And that was during the time we weren't speaking to each other. Uh -huh. And she was like, she was like, who is that bitch singing that? <laughs> I'm, she said, she said, I'm gonna sing it just like her. Oh I'm gonna sing it note for note, just like she's singing. Who the fuck is that? And they said, <laughs> excuse my language. That's okay, girl. And she said, but that's what she said. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, and they said penny four, and she was like, damn, not the penny I want, four. I hate her right now, <laughs> right? I hate her right now. Why well, have to be her? Yes. But she still did it at yeah. note for note, exactly like I sang the demo. And then I also did a tune with with um, with um, Andre where I arranged the vocals for Natalie Cole, rest uh -huh. in peace. Mm -hmm. um, Gonna make you mine. Yes. Oh, Penny. So I went in and arranged those. The leads she sang it exactly like I sang it, oh, which okay. is like an honor beyond words. Because the little girl in me that had my Shaka Khan records and my Natalie Cole records uh -huh. was just like, oh my God, mm -hmm. you know? And did you do the same for the Gap Band? Um, no, I didn't do any arrangements for the Gap Band. I mean, I went in the studio, like the thing with the Gap Band is I mean, the president of the company would call me to come in and sing some stuff. Uh -huh. So I ended up on a couple of things. Um, that's me on I Found My Baby. I'm the female voice you hear in that. Oh, I and, know that. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, girl. Yes. And, um, there's another one on Gap 8, which a whole lot of people didn't hear. It's mm -hmm. called We Can Make It All Right. Oh. We can make it all right. Sorry, my voice ain't going right now, but it's it's pretty hot. So I did sing on a few things for them, but I never really sang with Gap Band. We were just with the same label. Okay. So a lot of us kind of interchanged with Yarbrough Peoples and their band. A lot of us interchanged with each other, you know. Yes, yes. Yarbrough Peoples, that's another great group. Oh, I can't wait. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, Amazing. And, yes. And now you play keyboards, flute, I do. bass, I do. drums, uh, guitar, synthesizer. No, I don't play guitar. I don't play guitar actually, but okay. you know, and I'm not, I'm not like great. I'm not mm -hmm. like brilliant at any of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I play well enough to 
put down tracks to let the really proficient players know the idea. Uh -huh. You know, but I, I, I'm pretty good for a girl. You know, I could program some drums and throw some strings on there. And really, music of today mm -hmm. is really, that's what it's about. Yes. You know what I mean? That same little stuff, you know, I was doing. That's what those tracks, I mean, you know, especially in the in the hip hop world. Yeah, you know. that's all sampling. Yes, yes. <laughs> and beat the, yes. Yes. And even, or, and loops, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. when it's not, you know, I keep saying like, uh, like a little scrappy, mm -hmm. no problem. Mm -hmm. That pretty much just goes, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you could get crunk in the club, roll through the, uh, get, you know. And so I got into what they were doing because that's mm -hmm. what people, you know. Uh -huh. And so, you know, so it made me a little rusty in terms of my jazz chops and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I kind of put my jazz thing behind. Well, you know, this, this snap thing just kind of consumed up everything. Yes. And made me become who that needed me to be. No. Um, no, you know, but I, I still do my jazz, you know, my Steely yes. Dan and my Pat oh, Metheny. And girl, you I'm know still that. off into that. That's, I love, oh my God. Now, when you got with Snap, how, tell us how you got with Snap. I want them to hear. That was a Shaka thing too. <laughs> Cause that's um, what Shaka, she did, they, she was supposed to do a demo for him and she sent well, you in to do it. Well, basically, I mean, here's how it went. Mm -hmm. They called her one mm -hmm. night. She and I had moved to London, uh -huh. honestly, to get mm -hmm. off drugs. We didn't want to yeah. go to rehab. Yeah. So we said we came up with a brilliant idea. Well, actually, she did. Mm -hmm. And honestly, she left me in LA at first. Uh -huh. And then a couple of weeks later, she was like, I can't leave her there with that. <laughs> so she brought me over to London and we locked ourselves in an apartment mm -hmm. um, for a while. And they called her to um they called her to uh, that these Germans. I, we don't even know. We still don't know to this day how they got her information. But <laughs> they called and asked her to be on this project, mm -hmm. and um, she said, "She said um, I don't do rap. You go do it." <laughs> so that's Look pretty much that. what happened. Look at that. Look at that. And then and therein lies the story of Snap, Penny Ford, and Snap. The whole thing. That's a whole nother story. Yes. And then you go and you and snap come the the line your you just have to make a sound. <laughs> and then yeah, well, and I mean, you know, I when I got there, I didn't understand that music either. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And but I'm a church girl. Mm -hmm. When they turn the mic on, you get your tambourine and you start singing something. You better start humming. You better hum it. You better and make that's you better much how snap hum. how how snap happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn on the mic. Yeah. Let's go. Start humming, start doing something. And then with Snap, you guys just took off. And it's still is something it's still being played to this day. It's just, it's never out of the loop. Snap is never. It's never out of the loop. It is constantly on play. And that that's is, true. That's, and you guys, in your career, that's you've absolutely. sold over 20 million records, Penny. Well, actually, the power sold about 90 million. Woo! The album, I think, sold 20 million worldwide. Yes. But that single, the power wow. sold about 90 million to date. Worldwide. Girl, crazy. Girl, girl. And then, okay, Crazyness. that's the power. Then you did, oops, <laughs> oops, up, oops. You did that. And then, um, what was it? Mary, Mary had a little boy. Yes. After that. <laughs> you know, there are, there are several of those Snap songs that are still really huge over here mm -hmm. that never really saw the light of day in um, America. Really? But uh, yeah, but the rest of the world's so much bigger than America that. That it really didn't matter. True. That is very, 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 you know. very true. So, and with that success, um, 
you you're you are still you know you're always pinning from Cincinnati mm-hmm. or from, oh, from yeah. Ohio Ohio well, I have to I have to really keep in touch with her mm-hmm. because otherwise I'm going to morph into some persona and yeah. be out there like some crazy woman out in the streets you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. and Penny in Ohio is the daughter of this amazing woman who changed the lives of so many people. She really and did. I want and I want you to talk about that. Your mom is um, Miss Carolyn. She, you know, we all pray, you know, the, the, the script you know, would say, you know, we're going to stand before kings and queens and, mm-hmm. and leaders and all of this. And your mom being just little Miss Carolyn, have, her, her, you just explain it. You just explain it. Your mother. Oh, go ahead. Know, she, had, she had a really rough you know, life coming up. I mean, you know, she was born down south mm-hmm. and uh, kind of raised in North Carolina and down there. Most of the only thing, you know, job you could get, and a lot of people in North Carolina still tell you this to this day, mm-hmm. is picking tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. And so she didn't want to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And so she went into the army. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she got into singing. Mm-hmm. So she was a nightclub singer when mm-hmm. I was born mm-hmm. and wild and crazy. Mm-hmm. But I think shortly after I left, um, I went to Japan with a band and um, stopped off in LA and mm-hmm. just never left. Uh-huh. And during that time, she was busy getting her life together mm-hmm. and she really redeemed herself. She did crazy things like crazy, closed down eight crack houses Mm. in um in the hood and turned them into tutoring centers and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um she had seniors media centers and she sat on boards um with some very powerful republicans who ended Mm -hmm. up coming back and taking care of her when she got sick yeah or they helped me to be able to take care of her and my grandmother and my family right she did a lot Mm -hmm. in the years that she had left and um, worked with a lot of people and people still speak very highly of her. There are a couple scholarships and awards in her name mm-hmm. in Cincinnati now. And those, uh-huh. those things will live on forever. And um, yeah, I was proud of, oh, pastor home girl. Yes, I indeed. Her. Yes, indeed. And um, do you mind, um, when your when when your mom was sick, one of mm. the well known um, people, um, you co- contacted you or you were in touch with one of these well known individuals. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. Well, um, she uh, like the the opioid crisis is mm-hmm. like the ground zero for that is right outside of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. in Fairfield and Hamilton, Ohio. So my mother had sat on a lot of boards for, you know, eradicating the opioid crisis and Mm -hmm. fighting that. And one of the people she got to know was, um, he was a congressman at the time Mm -hmm. and he's a Senator now, GOP Senator Rob Portman. Uh And uh, he, she caught the attention of him And he basically introduced her to George W. Bush, Uh who ended up being the person who took care of my mom until death and even after. Mm -hmm. He actually paid for my mom's funeral Mm -hmm. and they put her away in grand fashion Uh with a 21 gun salute, all that. So Uh it was good, it was great. And she was so deserving of it. She was so deserving. She worked hard, she did. She worked hard to make up for it. And, you know, I asked her, you know, because she spent a considerable amount of time in the gutter, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, My grandmother had custody of me and my younger brother. And especially Mm -hmm. after she lost her children, she really started to go down this spiral. Mm -hmm. 
that mm -hmm. my grandmother hid me and my brother from. Mm -hmm. But I was later able to ask her, like, what were you thinking about when you mm -hmm. were in the gutter? And she said, I used to ask God why he put me in the gutter. Mm -hmm. And so all that work that she was doing, she said, now I know why I was in the gutter. That's right. You know, I couldn't help these people if I didn't know what it was like to be down there. That's right. That so, is very, very true. You know, I learned a lot of things through her and her journey, her pain, her, mm -hmm. her struggle and her triumphs, yeah. you know, so that was amazing. I mean, I wish, you know, like anybody else that she'd stayed around longer because mm -hmm. I still had more questions right. and more things that have just become apparent to me like just over this past year, this uh -huh. 2020, uh -huh. that I wish I could ask her. But, you know, she's still around somewhere giving me the answers. I just have to look for them in yep. other things, you know? Yep, <laughs> that's very true. Penny, mm -hmm. um, you've had, I, um, the career that you've had, that you have, um, it's, you are an outstanding human being and you are, you are a testament of your mother of your parents and you, your sister, Sharon, your brother, Greg, and all of your family. No, Jean. Who? My brother, Jean. Jean, why, where did I say Greg? Your dad, where did I get Greg from? I don't know. I think the G threw me off, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You are, um, I told you I'm, I'm a fan. I'm your friend and I'm a fan and you have, an amazing career that spans years. And your music gets people up, that chemical breakdown. And folks, it, it will get people up moving. It puts a smile on your face. It takes you back to, you know, when you're young and in love in the 90s, baby. And I'm telling you, there's a couple of artists. There's some of your songs of the reason my child is alive. You know <laughs> So Chris, Chris, I know, you that's right. <laughs> well, you know, I have been responsible for a lot of babies being born. Yes, baby. Yes. That's baby. a weird perspective. When you think about that, that's like, whoa. But you know, and it's the truth. You. I'm telling and you. And you know, you know, we can break this up. We can we can do part two. We can do yes. as many parts as you want. We because you know, we got yeah. a whole lot to talk about. We got yeah. a whole yeah, lot. That's can. why I said this is the beginning of yeah. Of, um, of, of a series of episodes because you and I have some stories to tell and we're going to bring some friends with yes. us <laughs> to tell. No, we have to talk about, we have, we, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yes, I am. Yes. I was talking to somebody about that. I'll tell okay. you about that. Okay. So um, I'm going to conclude this episode. <laughs>